Hello, I am Eunice Sabine Adola. We come to you with the November 2021 edition of the Divine Word Missionaries Web TV News. You are welcome. In this edition, we bring you stories from Argentina, Paraguay, Chad, Philippines, and Glasgow. Education is one of the most important activities in the congregation of the Divine Word Missionaries worldwide. Through their numerous schools and universities in many parts of the world, the Divine Word Missionaries make a significant contribution to the ecclesial communities engaged in the new evangelization and help to forge in young people the evangelical, human, anthropological and ethical values that are necessary to build a caring and fraternal society. Some members of the congregation and lay people who work in the educational ministry share their experiences. En forma familiar, hay una convivencia armónica. Realmente trabajar con los misioneros del Verbo Divino es, es un aprendizaje constante y es, es una responsabilidad y un compromiso porque ellos nos dan libertad para poder trabajar en las aulas. Y tratamos de, de impregnar en nuestros chicos la espiritualidad del, del Verbo Divino. Lo que siempre me marcó a mí como impronta del colegio y por lo tanto de la congregación es por un lado la impronta misionera, por supuesto, que traducimos en el colegio en hacer que los chicos lleven lo bueno que tienen, la palabra de Dios, por supuesto, pero también su alegría, su solidaridad a, a otros y estén abiertos y mirando a los demás ante sus necesidades y problemas. Eso sería el corazón de lo misionero. Y el otro aspecto que a mí personalmente me marcó y que me parece que también es una impronta de la congregación es la piedad y la devoción de Arnoldo Janssen, que nos, nos legó tantas y maravillosas oraciones, legarias y devoción. Eh, realmente un placer poder trabajar con los chicos día a día, contamos con una comunidad muy grande y siempre en nuestro trabajo diario de, de todo este equipo que formamos acá en, en la escuela, eh, está la imagen de Arnoldo, la imagen de Arnoldo que tratamos de transmitir a nuestros alumnos, que se lleven una partecita aún desde el nivel inicial hasta actualmente en el nivel secundario. Estamos también atravesados por todo lo que es la misión, eh, sobre todo lo que es para la congregación, la, el trabajo misional, y tratamos de que, bueno, que cada uno de nuestros chicos se lleven y formen parte de, de distintos trabajos misioneros a través de, de, de los años y de, los, de la cruzada de, que entran en jardín hasta que salen nuestros egresados en, en quinto año. Father Roberto a native of Ghana, is the principal of the Colegio Verbo Divino in Asuncion, in Paraguay. He has a good team of teachers and is satisfied with the formation they provide to the students. In this province, we have five colleges and two agricultural agricolas. And in this college, we distinguish por the values that se educan, the formation integral, and also la formación religiosa que estamos dando a los chicos. El enfoque de la provincia es concentrarnos con estos jóvenes porque son los líderes, son los líderes del futuro. Entonces lo que hacemos, aparte de la educación normal que se da, tratamos de inculcar en estos jóvenes los valores de la vida, donde hay respeto, donde se aprenda a compartir y también La parte misionera, para que sepan que es un colegio fundado por los verbitas. The Divine Word Missionaries arrived in 2003 in Chad. After a few years upon their arrival in Chad, seeing the low level of education in the country, they made education one of their missionary priorities. Ten years ago, they started a primary and secondary school for boys and girls. It is the first school in the area. Education has always been a priority for us as readings in Chad Mission. We have uh, 11 kindergartens, uh, two elementary schools, and a middle school. So, in any given day, all these schools together welcome almost 1,500 students. In our elementary schools, a third of our student body is Catholic. A third is Protestant. And the remaining third 
is Muslim. 75% of our students' parents are farmers. With the school fees every year, we always have problems. This is not our biggest difficulty. In my opinion, the bigger challenge that we face, that faces child in education, is the lack of understanding the vital role of education in the lives of, of these young children on the parts of certain parents. And it's much worse when it comes to education for girls. So in that sense, we still have a lot of work to do. We have launched a project to fundraise for the construction of a high school to provide to our students a complete holistic and Catholic education from K to 12. And for that reason, I ask for your prayer. I ask for your support. I invite you who have uh, expertise in the elementary, secondary education, education of youth, to come to Chad Mission. Because your presence, your expertise, your know-how are needed here and will be greatly appreciated here. The Colegio San Jose in the city of Esperanza in Argentina, which was one of the first schools of the Divine Word Missionaries, founded in the time of the founder, Arnold Johnson, celebrated its 132nd anniversary last October. Father Thadio from Poland, the school's legal representative, talks about the 132 years of the school as an effective form of missionary service of the Divine Word Missionaries in Argentina. In this moment, so transcendent and solemn, as the representative legal of this beautiful institution, I would like compartir tres ideas que me parecen importantes destacar. Primero, miramos el pasado con gratitud. Muchas obras edilicias majestuosas se han desarrollado en este lugar. Impresionan las dimensiones, impactan la solidez, las estructuras del Colegio San José, pero mucho más maravilla, por lo menos a mí, la inmensa tarea evangelizadora de personas extraordinarias, hombres carismáticos, grandes visionarios. En segundo lugar, destaco, vivimos el presente con pasión. En este tiempo actual tan complejo, el colegio sigue siendo un espacio privilegiado de evangelización de niños, adolescentes y jóvenes. Queremos formar personas íntegras, buenos ciudadanos, excelentes cristianos, En tercer lugar, abrazamos el futuro con esperanza. Mucho es lo que se ha hecho en el pasado, grande es lo que se hace hoy, pero es fascinante y maravilloso mirar hacia el futuro con ojos de misionero, enamorados de Cristo y de su Iglesia, teniendo presentes las palabras de nuestro padre fundador Arnold Janssen, que un día dijo, Cuando hayamos hecho todo lo que estaba de su parte, Dios hará el arresto. Y que la misión de la congregación siga creciendo y desarrollándose. On 4th October, the Superior General, Father Paul Louis Budikleden, on the feast of St. Francis of Assisi, invited the whole congregation to join the Laudato Si platform for action, the seven-year journey towards integral ecological convention. Father Budi's invitation comes to strengthen the bamboo reforestation initiatives that have been carried out in the Philippines to save the Marikina Valley after Typhoon Ulysses. Father Beltran, known as the Bamboo Priest, promoter of the project Children of the Earth, explains the strategies to save the Marikina Valley by planting bamboos. We are engaged in bamboo reforestation and the vision is one billion bamboo by 2030. So there's uh, some people we, we need to collaborate because it is a huge project. But we have chosen bamboo because first, bamboo grows very fast. It absorbs 35% more carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases than trees. And we can harvest them continually. There will be livelihood for the people. We will be processing bamboo shoots. We will be putting up 
bamboo processing plant so that uh, we can have engineered bamboo. So there are three reasons why we are doing it. First, we want to mitigate the dire effects of climate change. Second, we want to prevent erosion and flooding. And third, we want to give livelihood to as many people as possible because once we plant the billion bamboo and we can process them, $25 billion annual income according to the estimates of some economists. It is very important for us to mitigate climate change because the Philippines is the third most vulnerable country for the destruction that climate change will cause. So we have to call on everyone, not only in the Philippines, but on everyone to really help mitigate climate change. The UN Climate COP26 took place in Glasgow this month. Sister Ida from Germany, from the Congregation of the Missionary Servants of the Holy Spirit. Brother Alberto from Italy, from the Congregation of the Comboni Missionaries. And Father Liam, SVD from Ireland, of the Vivat International, participated in the event. Brother Carlos Ferrada, the General Coordinator for Justice and Peace and Integrity of Creation, had the opportunity to talk with Father Liam about his expressions of COP26. Father Liam, you, you were there as a, our representative at COP26. Uh, what was for you the most important, moving and urgent uh, talk or issue? Why? The thing that struck me very, very much as well was, and it gave me hope, it was the experience of the women very often from indigenous groups and young people also from indigenous groups, but not only from our world as well, who have become very literate in speaking about the whole problem of the, the climate. This gives me great encouragement. The end result, as you know, was half good, half not so good but it's a process. It's still on the way, even though time is short. But they have very good spokespersons who are emerging and will not give up the battle for more climate justice and so on. Father Liam, do you have any message to the SVDs and lay partners regarding how we must contribute to the conclusions of COP26 regarding the care of our common home? The first thing I would say is to remember what the motto of Vivat is, to gather for life, dignity and human rights. So I'm thinking to myself, if we all are following Christ, these values are something that should be part of our makeup, our thinking, our pastoral approaches. We should be working with the people that they may have life, that they might live a dignified existence and that their human rights be respected. But one of the things I learned at COP was that we don't exist alone. We must work with others who are already engaged, perhaps more so than ourselves. Give them a hand add to their voice, give them strength in proclaiming what will bring life to people, dignity and respect their human rights. Thanks for watching the news. See you next month. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel.